What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and these are the sneaker releases that you need to know about in February 2023. Starting things off on February 1st, we've got the Nike Air Max Scorpion Olive Aura. So you could say this shoe has an aura of olive. It's <laughs> It's so dumb. It's a light olive color. It's sort of more of like a light teal. This, of course, is the latest Nike Air Max Scorpion colorway. The Nike Air Max Scorpion is a pretty wild silhouette. You guys might have caught my review from a couple months ago. It's a shoe that's basically propped on top of this crazy thick Air Max midsole. It's not directly on top of it. There's like these stilt things that kind of lift it off of it. It's a really weird sneaker, but I love the way it looks. Not the most comfortable shoe in the world, which is kind of a disappointment, but overall, cool sneaker nonetheless. And if you're looking to grab one of these for yourself, you shouldn't have that hard of a time because I don't really see this sneaker selling out and so for that reason I'm giving this shoe a sit. It's also 250 bucks which is not cheap. Moving on to February 2nd, we've got two different colorways of the Nike ISPA Sense Flyknit dropping. The two relatively earth tone colorways dropping are Adobe and Bright Crimson and Sesame and Desert Ochre. Now, if you've been following Nike releases, I'm sure you're familiar with ISPA and their very experimental takes on standard sneakers. And this is absolutely no different. This shoe is a very experimental take on a, I guess, a high top knit sneaker. The shoe apparently is inspired by Zen Gardens and that's the reason for the ridges on the midsole. And also, according to Nike, apparently the shoe features at least 20% of recycled materials, which is kind of nice to see. I mean, let's be real, 20% is not a huge percentage of the overall sneaker, but it's nice to see them using some recycled materials. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is absolutely a polarizing look and one that I really have no idea how people are gonna feel about it, but it's an interesting take on a knit sneaker, and I think there are gonna be some people who are gonna be pretty big fans of this shoe. However, knowing Nike ISPA releases, they're usually pretty limited, and I would expect this release to be just as limited as all the rest. However, will there be enough hype for this shoe for the limited quantities of the sneaker to sell out? I'm not so sure, and for that reason, I think in most sizes, this shoe will probably not sell out, and because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Hey, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, it just depends on how many pairs of these they end up making. And then rounding off the second, we've got the undefeated Nike Air Force One Low Wild Berry. So as you could have guessed from the name of this sneaker, this shoe is a collaboration between Undefeated and Nike. And what's interesting about this patent leather covered sneaker is that according to Undefeated and Nike, no two panels on the shoe are the same. Which actually now looking at it is just, is not true. Is it? Did I read that right? From the orange swoosh to the nearly neon pink toe, no two panels are alike. An orange and red one. Okay, maybe I'm just misunderstanding what they're saying. It's very possible, but at the same time, I mean, the left shoe and the right shoe look similar. It's not like a what the sneaker. Either way, I kind of dig the way this sneaker looks. I like the crazy colors, and if you like wild berry inspired shoes, you're gonna love this look. Of course, like I mentioned before, this is a patent leather sneaker, so if you're a fan of patent leather shoes, another plus in the win column for this sneaker. If you don't like those, then you're probably gonna give this sneaker a pass, but the fact that this shoe is an undefeated collaboration, I think it's gonna add significantly to the hype of this sneaker. And for that reason, while it might not be the most popular undefeated collaboration, I wouldn't be surprised if this sneaker ends up selling out. Maybe not very quickly, but I wouldn't be surprised if it sells out. Then moving on to February 3rd at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we've got a brand new Apothecary sock collection dropping. And this, as you might be able to tell from the design of the socks, is our Valentine's Day collection. This collection comes in three different fire colorways. Let me open up one of these guys first to show you. Also something cool that we started doing in our newer socks, we added stickers inside the sock bags. So you always get a sticker with your new socks. As of right now, not every sock that we sell has that yet. It's just the newer collections. But eventually, in the future, all the socks should have stickers in the bag, which is pretty exciting. But all the Valentine's socks come with this heart on the back of the socks. You can match your significant other. It's a really nice feature. We actually did a collection very similar to this, I think our first Valentine's Day with Apothecary, except that was on sock 1.0, now they're on sock 3.0, which are incredibly soft, breathable, of course, because of our ISOweave technology. And of course, this collection doesn't just come in white, it also comes in cream and brown, and of course, black and white. Three fire colorways, if you guys wanna grab them, they're all available on apothecary.com at 11 a.m. Eastern time on February 3rd. But continuing on with our February 3rd releases, the next release is the Puma MB2 in Jade. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is by far my favorite Mellow Ball shoe ever. This shoe is incredible. I've actually had a lot of pairs of the Mellow MB1s. I think it's a really great basketball shoe and it's a really decent looking sneaker as well. And the MB2 is just an even better version of the MB1. I actually have not played basketball on a pair of MB2s yet, but I hope to in the future. And this Jade colorway is one that I'm absolutely going for. The Jade color used on this sneaker is also incredibly clean and a color we don't see a lot of on sneakers, so I'm excited about that. And of course, because Mellow Ball signature shoes tend to sell very quickly, this Jade colorway, because of how hot it is and I'm sure how limited it's gonna be will absolutely sell out. 
And then finally rounding off February 3rd, we've got the Air Jordan 2 Lucky Green. So it's obvious the Jordan brand is really pushing the Jordan 2s right now, which I'm personally not mad at. It's not my favorite silhouette, but it's nice to have a lot of these shoes available. And this Lucky Green colorway is actually pretty solid. Now, obviously it is inspired by Michael Jordan's insane performance against the Celtics. And because of that, I definitely love this sneaker because it means that the Celtics suck even though they're number one in the country right now, but to be fair, the Sixers are number two. But I've gotta say that this white leather upper accented by these bright green hits around the sneaker, and of course, the aged sort of cream colored midsole really make this sneaker pop and make it a shoe that if I can grab for retail, I'm definitely picking up. Now with that being said, even though this is definitely a clean colorway in my opinion, I think there's a really good chance that this sneaker might end up sitting on shelves. And the reason for that is because people just don't seem to love the Air Jordan 2. I honestly thought that the Air Jordan 2 Chicago's that dropped last year would be an instant sellout, and while yes, they did eventually sell out, it wasn't instant. People just don't seem to love Air Jordan 2's like that, which is kind of crazy to me. And because of that, even though this is a clean colorway that I do think in some sizes may sell out relatively quickly, I think overall, maybe even a week after release, you should be able to walk into a local sneaker store and pick up a pair of these for retail. And for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Moving on to February 4th, we've got the Air Jordan 5 Aqua. So this shoe comes in a colorway that apparently is inspired by the Air Jordan 8 Aqua, which I think is a decent inspiration. With that being said, there are some differences between the two shoes other than obviously the silhouette itself. So on the Air Jordan 8 Aquas, there's a lot of purples. On this shoe, there really isn't any purple whatsoever. On the Air Jordan 8 Aquas, there's not a lot of yellow. On this shoe, there's a good amount of yellow. And while yes, this shoe is inspired by the Air Jordan 8 Aquas, it's definitely a different looking sneaker overall. And I know I gave the Air Jordan 1 True Blues a lot of grief because that shoe didn't look exactly like the Air Jordan 3 True Blues. And the more that I thought about it, the more that I'm kind of moving into the camp that I'm glad it's not a one for one remake of the Air Jordan 3s. I'm glad they didn't put elephant print on the shoe, even though it definitely would have made it a more obvious inspiration, I guess. And I'm glad that they're doing the same thing with these Air Jordan 5s. It's not a direct take from the Air Jordan 8 Aquas. It's a different take on the same shoe or colorway. These Air Jordan 5 Aquas come with a black nubuck upper accented by yellow shark teeth, as well as a very deep blue translucent outsole. And overall, while it's not my favorite Air Jordan 5 colorway, it's definitely a clean look. I just don't see there being that much hype for this sneaker and so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. And then finally rounding off February 4th, we've got two different colorways of the Union LA Air Jordan 1 KO Lows. So I've actually already done a full review on this sneaker, and if you guys want to check it out, there will be a link in the description below. Not only that, if you want to grab this sneaker for yourself, I've made sure to leave a link to this shoe through the YouTube shopping tab, which is either on your screen or underneath this video. But this collaboration is one that I don't think that many people were excited about, but now that we're getting closer to the release of both of these colorways, which, let's be fair, are pretty similar colorways, people are starting to understand how dope this shoe actually is. So there are two colorways dropping, the white colorway, which comes in, as you guys can tell, white canvas, white midsole, and a gray Nike swoosh, and also the sail colorway, which, you guessed it, comes with the sail midsole, gray upper, and blue Nike swoosh. And what makes both of these sneakers so interesting is that the swoosh is actually Velcro, and you can remove it to either put on a different colored swoosh, or just reveal the UNLA branding underneath. But it's not just that. This is apparently the very first Air Jordan 1 KO low. We've never seen this silhouette before, so it's kind of cool to see a collaboration bringing this silhouette out of nowhere. So from what I've heard, there's actually an early release of this shoe on Union LA's website. I'm not sure if it's just for one of these colorways or for both of these colorways, but the main release is gonna be on the Sneakers app on February 4th. So if you want a pair of these for yourself, make sure to be on your phones right at 10 a.m. Eastern time because both of these colorways will absolutely sell out very quickly. Continuing on to February 5th, we've got the Tom Sachs Nike General Purpose Shoe in Brown. So this shoe is apparently supposed to be a boring sneaker, a very widely available shoe that's just a perfect everyday shoe designed by Tom Sachs. However, we all know that anything designed by Tom Sachs, sneaker collab wise, tends to sell out immediately and resell for lots of money. This colorway, I'll be honest, this all brown colorway is definitely going to be the least popular of all of the Tom Sachs general purpose shoes. However, it's still gonna be a relatively hyped up release. The shoe literally comes in just tonal browns. You've got a dark brown midsole, a even darker brown outsole, and then a light brown upper. And overall, while it is a clean look, it is genuinely Pretty boring. Now in terms of release, this field brown colorway, as it's officially called, is supposedly releasing for $110, like with the other colorways. And I think overall, it shouldn't be that difficult to get. However, I do think this shoe will probably sell out upon release. 
Next up on February 7th, we've got the Nike Air More Up Tempo Dark Pony Soft Pink. So this Valentine's Day inspired sneaker comes in primarily a dark brown accented by a light pink. The actual silhouette of the Nike Air More Up Tempo remains unchanged, doesn't say like love across the side or anything like that. It's just your standard Air More Up Tempo with brown and pink. And overall it's clean, but it's not that exciting. And for that reason, I do think that this shoe will probably sit on shelves. After that, also dropping on the 7th, we've got the Nike Dunk Low Night Maroon Soft Pink. So this shoe actually already had a very limited shock drop on the sneakers app, which annoyingly was almost impossible to get through on because so many people were trying for it. And uh, it didn't seem like the shoe was flying off the shelves that quickly. Well, I guess they literally couldn't because of all the technical difficulties that the sneakers app was having. But regardless, it didn't seem like it was that crazy of a sneaker. The shoe itself comes in a dark maroon upper accented by light cream overlays, as well as a soft pink Nike swoosh. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty clean, but pretty simple Nike Dunk Low colorway. And while yes, I think a lot of people will be going for this sneaker, I don't think it's gonna be that difficult to grab in store after release. So while I do think the shoe will sell out, I do think it's gonna be a slow sellout. Then moving on to February 9th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Zoom Comfort 2 Valentine's Day. So this shoe actually has a colorway that's similar to the Heritage 1s. It features a primarily white upper accented by some red suede on the toe and some red details on the Nike swoosh. And overall, it's a pretty clean look. Now personally, I've never been a huge fan of the Jordan 1 Comforts. I feel like the changes to the silhouette kind of ruined the sneaker for me. I'm just an, I guess an Air Jordan 1 OG purist, but either way, it's a clean looking sneaker. It's clean enough that if you're trying to grab a slightly more comfortable version of the Air Jordan 1s, this is not a bad way to go, especially if you're looking for a Valentine's Day themed sneaker. And actually, if you were to grab that shoe, these socks would go perfect. They're awesome. Definitely check them out. And actually, one detail that I really like about this sneaker is that on the heel, you've actually got the words anytime, anywhere embroidered into the back of the shoe in white. It's a nice touch, and it differentiates this shoe from other Air Jordan 1s. And again, while the Air Jordan 1 Comforts or even the Comfort 2s are not really for me, this colorway is probably the closest that I've come to picking up a pair for myself. And maybe I will for a review. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section down below if you guys would like to see me review this shoe but either way I think it's gonna be popular but probably not popular enough to sell out and so for that reason I'm giving this shoe a sit. Also dropping on February 9th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 4 Oil Green. So according to the sneakers app, the official name of this shoe is Oil Green. However, up until recently, this shoe was referred to as the Seafoam 4s. And you know what? I feel like Seafoam is a much nicer name than Oil Green. I like the way that sounds better than Oil Green. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's not that important. But regardless, this is a very clean looking shoe. Its color blocking is similar to that of the Fire Red 4s, and I think a lot of people are going to like that. And I like the fact that the color that they switched out the red for is a really nice sort of Oil Green green. And of course with Air Jordan 4s being as popular as they are right now, this shoe is going to garner a lot of attention and I think a lot of people are really going to dig this look. It's just unfortunate that this shoe is technically only releasing in women's sizes. Sure, it might be extended women's sizing, so people with larger feet, like a lot of dudes with larger feet, still will be able to grab a pair of these, but it's not a full family sizing release, which is kind of a bummer. Especially when I see this shoe being as popular as I think it's going to be, I definitely think this shoe will sell out, and I think if they had released larger sizes for this shoe, those would have sold out as well. So I guess it is what it is, but obviously I do think this shoe will sell out. Then moving on to the 10th, we've got the Nike KD3 in Challenge Red. This shoe is also known as the KD3 All-Stars, and it is re-releasing around the same time as the All-Star game, or maybe a week before. The shoe comes in an almost entirely red makeup, featuring this cool black to red gradient on the midfoot panel. And if you're a fan of Kevin Durant or even classic basketball sneakers, this is a must cop. I'm actually really stoked to see a lot of these classic basketball sneakers coming back, like some of the LeBrons, we've got some Kobe's, and now some KD's. And in my opinion, it's a great thing when some of those shoes are some of the best looking basketball basketball sneakers of all time. Will this shoe resell for a lot like it did in the past? Probably not, but I do think that this shoe will be very popular. I just, I'm not totally sure if this shoe is going to sell out. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit, but if you want a pair of these, stay on top of the ball because it is possible that this shoe is going to be a lot more popular than I think people might think, like myself, so it could sell out too. So I'm giving this shoe a sit, but if you want it, try and grab a pair regardless on release day by entering raffles or entering on the sneakers app. Then moving on to February 11th, we've actually got a pretty big announcement, and that's that Apothecary will be at SneakerCon Philly. Obviously, Philly is the home city of Apothecary, so we're going to be there in full force. We're actually dropping a limited collection that's Philly-themed, which I'm super excited about. Here's a picture on the screen. In fact, I think this is also the first time that SneakerCon has ever been in Philly. So if you guys want to come out, say what's up, and maybe grab some limited Apothecary stuff, make sure to stop by SneakerCon Philly on the 11th. And like I said, I'll be there at the Apothecary booth all day. If you guys want to come through, chop it up with me at SneakerCon 
SneakerCon Philadelphia. I'd love to see you guys. And then in addition to SneakerCon Philly on the 11th, we're also getting the release of the Air Jordan 4 Craft. So I'm not gonna lie, even though this shoe is not a classic Air Jordan 4 and it doesn't even feature a lot of the same materials that are usually used on Air Jordan 4s, at least in this way, it's a pretty clean look. I really love the gray upper of the sneaker accented by sort of a creamy yellow used on the eyelets of the shoe. And the fact that they're using different materials on different panels of the shoe to kind of make it look like it's handmade is actually pretty cool. And hey, this look might not be for everybody, but it's definitely one that I think is very easy to wear, especially because it's a gray sneaker. So the materials used on the upper of this shoe seems to be split between suede, nubuck, and some kind of maybe tumbled leather, I'm not 100% sure, but either way, it's some really cool material usages. And again, while it's not for everybody, I definitely think it's a clean look. And of course, because this shoe is an Air Jordan 4, and Air Jordan 4s just seem to be the sneaker of 2022 and 2023, this shoe will absolutely sell out. Then moving on to February 14th, we've got a restock of two of the most popular sneakers of the last couple years, and they of course are the Nike Dunk High Panda and the Nike Dunk Low Panda. I don't really have much to say about these shoes, you guys already know everything there is to know about these black and white Nike Dunks. I think the Nike Dunk High Pandas will probably end up sitting on shelves because we've gotten them a lot and they're not as popular as the Lowe's. And of course, I think the Nike Dunk Low Pandas, as of right now, will sell out. Because even though we've gotten a bunch of them, people still really want them. I think even normal people who are not sneakerheads are catching on to the fact that pandas are popular, and so now they're buying out the stock of pandas. So I think the lows will sell, I think the highs will sit, but either way, it's gonna be a popular shoe regardless. But then interestingly, on the next day, February 15th, we've got a shoe which actually looks pretty similar, but it's gonna be a lot more popular, and that's the Air Jordan 1 High 85 in black and white. So for me, as an Air Jordan 1 fan, this colorway and this release is really, really exciting. First of all, the silhouette is the 85 silhouette, which means it's the truest silhouette shape to the original 1985 pair, and the colorway is an OG colorway that we haven't seen for like almost a decade at this point. And I know, it's black and white, it's not that exciting, but for Air Jordan 1 fans, it's something that I think a lot of us are looking forward to, and it's probably gonna be pretty limited and also pretty hyped up, so Hypebeast will be into this shoe too. And it really is funny to me that Nike's re-releasing a bunch of pandas the day before this shoe releases, and the colorways are so similar, the shoes are so similar, I don't know exactly why they're doing that, but I don't think it'll even cannibalize the release that much because I think both the Panda Dunks will sell out and these will sell out, and I just think they're just dropping them all at once to get them out there. Plus, it's probably a decent Valentine's Day release because you can get his and hers pairs pretty easily. But back to the Air Jordan 185 black and whites. This shoe is incredibly clean. It features a white upper accented by black overlays. You've got a white Wings logo, and again, this is a 1985 cut, which means it's better materials than the standard Air Jordan 1s, and it's a little bit higher. I guess the price is also a little bit higher, too, at 200 bucks. But I Either way, it's gonna be an incredibly popular release that a lot of people are going for, and for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. Continuing on to February 17th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 1 Game Royal Varsity Maze. So this Laney-inspired Air Jordan 1 comes with a bright yellow upper accented by bright blue overlays, and unfortunately only comes in women's sizing. Which is a bummer because this is a pretty clean colorway. It's not something I could see myself wearing every single day, but it's nice to have a pop of color. Now as we all know, Air Jordan 1s are not as popular as they used to be. Air Jordan 4s have kind of taken their place. So even though this is a colorway that I think would have sold out maybe two years ago, nowadays I just think people aren't as interested in Jordan 1s especially not colorways like this. This reminds me of the Brotherhood colorway, at least in terms of sort of out there-ness. And so because of that, I do think this shoe will sit on shelves. However, I think larger sizes, larger men's style sizes may be harder to find. Then moving on to February 18th, we've got the return of a classic with the playoff Air Jordan 13s. So this shoe was first seen on the feet of Michael Jordan during the 1998 All-Star Game, and it seems like this shoe is returning for the 25th anniversary during the All-Star Game of 2023, which is kind of cool because 2023 is the year of Michael Jordan. This is one of those Air Jordan 13 colorways, or just Air Jordan colorways in general, that everyone knows and everyone loves. It's iconic. This Air Jordan 13 comes primarily in a black leather upper accented by yellow and red hits, as well as a white midsole, and it's definitely a toned down Air Jordan 13 look, but it's one that I think is incredibly easy to wear. Even though I think the shoe is gonna be incredibly popular when it releases around All-Star Weekend, I think Jordan Brand is gonna make a ton of these, so it shouldn't be that hard to get. In fact, people were already reviewing this shoe like a month or two ago, maybe even two months ago at this point, and that usually means that there's a lot of pairs available and they're not difficult to get. So for that reason, while yes, I do think this shoe will sell out, I don't think it's gonna be impossible to get, so you shouldn't have too hard of a time grabbing it on the sneakers app or maybe at your local sneakers store, but if you want it for retail, definitely try and grab it on the day of release. Moving on to February 22nd, we've got the women's Nike Zoom Vomero 5 in Proton Dust Metallic Silver. 
So over the last couple years, there's been a resurgence of retro-inspired running sneakers, and the Zoom Vomero 5 is one of those shoes that definitely embodies that idea and that style. And I've actually seen a lot of hype behind this shoe. I know a lot of people are stoked for this release, and I kind of wish it was releasing in men's sizes as well, because I would probably grab a pair for myself. A majority of the shoe comes in light gray, accented by metallic silver hits on the Nike swoosh and a couple on the toe, and overall, it's a very clean and honestly very comfortable sneaker. And it's a shoe that you might not think is incredibly hyped up, but one that I definitely do not think will sit on shelves, and so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. Then moving on to February 25th, we've got the Air Jordan 6 Cool Gray. So this shoe comes in primarily white leather accented by gray suede hits. It's a pretty clean Air Jordan 6, but it's not something that'll draw a lot of attention. And I'll be honest, in February 2023, we're getting a lot of really great Air Jordan releases, and this is probably the one that I'm least excited about. It's not that interesting, it's not that special. The Air Jordan 6 is not a silhouette that I absolutely love, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. And so for that reason, while it's a clean look, and if you're looking for a solid Air Jordan 6, great shoe to go with, I think overall this shoe will probably end up sitting on shelves. I mean, the more that I look at it, the more that I do like it. It's a clean look. I like the dark gray hits on the top of the shoe, and I like the icy outsole, but it's just not that exciting. It's really not. And then finally rounding off the month and finishing off the 25th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Elephant Print. So as the name suggests, this is an Elephant Print Air Jordan 1. It's definitely Air Jordan 3 inspired. It features a white leather upper accented by Elephant Print overlays on the entire upper of the shoe. And I definitely think this is a look that's going to turn some people off, but maybe turn some people on and not in the weird way. It actually kind of reminds me of the Supreme Nike Dunks. And I think that might be the saving grace for this shoe. Because honestly, if you were looking at this shoe without caring about Elephant Print and its history, you might think it's ugly and it is kind of an ugly sneaker but if you think about where the elephant print came from and how the Air Jordan 3 is sort of inspiring a lot of colorways this year it's a cool idea and it's one that I think some people will be really into now let's be honest is this shoe going to sell out probably not I really don't know how popular this shoe is going to end up being but Air Jordan 1s are not as popular as they used to be it's not an OG colorway and it's not a colorway that I think a lot of people will be that drawn to so for that reason I'm giving this shoe a sit but that pretty much wraps up all the sneaker releases that you need to know about in 2023. Let me know your thoughts on these releases in the comment section down below, and also if I missed any, because you never know, some releases might pop up after I film this video. So let me know your thoughts in that comment section down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.